Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today was slated to be a sit down teaching video, but after all the buyer's guides we've been doing lately, I just wanna go fishing. So that's what we're doing. Come along, hop in the boat, and let's head out on the water. Outside of the buyer's guide videos, Tim and I have been fishing on the Tennessee River quite a bit. So this morning, I got up at four in the morning and decided I wanted to do something completely different. I jumped in the truck and started hauling, and we are on a Highland Reservoir. This is a lake I haven't been to in several years. I have no idea what's going on here. Haven't even checked water temperature yet. We're just going fun fishing. You know, some days you just want to get out there and catch them. And when I woke up this morning, it was one of those days. Now, granted, it was 24 degrees when I left the house, it's cold here, I don't know what it is, it's cold. But I think it's gonna be a really good day. I've got a couple jigs tied on, uh, an A-rig, a mid-strolling bait, a tube, a deep crank. No clue what we're in for. We're just going fishing. I think this will be a lot of fun. Let's make a run. It's gonna be a pretty long haul to our first stop. All right, we survived the first run. I'm a little bit frozen, but it's all good. Uh, water clarity looks really really good i mean i i'm just looking into blackness but i don't know it's pretty clear i like that this should be good let's get to it Feels like a really good fish too. It's just heavy. That's a beautiful smallmouth. Jeez. He's cold. Look at him. Doesn't even want to jump. Oh, that's the way to start right there. Look at that fish. That's so awesome. I'm speed cranking. Eight to one reel, throwing that tactical DD. That green pumpkin color. Look at that beautiful, beautiful smallie. Came out of about 20 foot of water, give or take. That's an awesome way to start. Oh, I missed him. Right in that rock. Let's see if he comes back. Come on. Come back for some more. He thumped that jig. Mm. Bummer. I was hoping he'd turn around and hit it again. A lot of times, if that was a smallie like that crankbait fish was, a lot of times. There he is. Those smallies will come back and get it again. Just like that. <laughs> That's too cool. Throwing a finesse football jig. Yamamoto double tail grub on the back of it. Everything you would expect us to be throwing this time of year. It's just, these are consistent baits that we rely on. And when I'm showing up to a place and it's been years and I have no clue what's going on, I'm gonna start with those key confidence baits. All right, let's see if we can catch a couple more and then I'll kind of give you a rundown of why I chose where I'm at and sort of what I'm thinking. Oh, I'm bumping into some really good chunk rock again. Good. There he is. 
clockwork. They are on that rock. Whoa, that feels like a good fish. Whoa. Nice. Beautiful fish. Oh, that's just awesome. Throwing that football jig again. Beautiful smallie. That is so cool. See if we can get back on that same rock patch up there. So here's the deal. Here's what we're doing. You know, you have to pick somewhere to start, right? I picked the end of some long tapering points. So the lake is drawn down quite a bit. I don't know, 10, 12, 15 feet. So these long tapering points run out and then they break to deep water. Well, because it's drawn down so far, those breaks are actually fairly close to shore right now. That's why, you know, we're, I don't know, we're still a ways out here, but we're a lot closer than we would be if the water was 10 feet higher. Oh, there's that rock. Oh, that feels good. So in the winter time, as that water cools down, fish tend to congregate uh, in high percentage areas. And the ends of points where they break is one of those places. So that's why I chose to start here. Man, I'm banging through that rock. That feels really good. I feel like we're gonna get bit. So within that point or any other place for that matter, in the winter, bass like rock. They set on rock if it's an option. So in a place like this, a long tapering point, as I look up there, most of it's like mud, sand, but there's just scattered chunk rock on it. So as I'm fan casting around here, either with the crankbait or with the jig, if I bump into rock, I make a note of that. Because if this, you know, if there's a hundred yards and there's three or four patches of rock, the good fish at least will be sitting right on that rock. And again, they, they tend to be in numbers this time of year. They tend to be schooled up a little bit. So if I can find a patch of rock that's got fish on it, potentially it can have a lot of fish on it. So that's where we started. That's what we're doing right now. Uh, and it, I mean, we just landed on fish. We got that first one on a crankbait. I was going fast, just fan casting, which told me they're here. Uh, and then I slowed down and started firing that jig around. And every time I bang into rock, it seems like we get another bite. It's very cool to see it working right off the bat like that. It'll be interesting to see how this transitions throughout the day, but I feel, I've got, I mean, we're already catching them really good. We've got a feeling we're gonna smash them. I decided I was gonna try and bottom stroll out here in this hollow. I made two casts, and this fish caught it on the way down. That's awesome. This is a raid bait. I honestly don't even remember the name of it, but I'll look it up for you. Nice smallie. So I started out, out on the tips of these points where they went out and broke. Then I've worked my way into the hollow between two points. So the low spot in the belly of the cove, there's nothing out here. There's no rock. It's just mud or sand or something. It's totally smooth. But a lot of times fish will still back out and they'll sit right in the hollow, right down the gut of these things. So I came out here, it's too deep to crank. Otherwise I'd speed crank. I'm in 35 feet of water. It's deep, uh, but I started working up this hollow. And like I said, it took two casts, crazy.
Golly, that's fun. Oh, that's a good one right there. Hello. Large mouth. Check him out. Beautiful fish. Half ounce football. Too cool. You might notice I'm just slow pulling that thing. That's something we do a lot this time of year. Just slow drag that jig. And when it bumps into things, you know, that's why this double tail grub is a five inch Yamamoto grub. That's why that is so important because there's just such subtle movement out of those tails. And that's that half ounce dirty jigs finesse football. It's got that lighter wire hook, which is letting me go down to 12 pound line. Throwing that on the 844 CMBR. You guys know that's one of my favorite rods. That's allowing me to really fish it slow and still have good movement on the bottom. First rock I felt on this point. Just a little bit of rock. Sometimes that's all it takes. There he is. Oh, I lost him. He was right on that rock. That's amazing. Amazing. They just, they're glued to that stuff. I wish I would have got him, but that was cool. He hit it hard. Dong. Oh, I missed him. He, I felt him pick it up, and right when I went to swing, I felt him spit it out. That fish was fast. That's crazy. Like by the time I swung, he wasn't even on it anymore. Wow. I think it's time we make a move. Do something. I don't know if we'll do something completely different, but at least a completely different area. Uh, the last few bites have been short strikes. All of a sudden, we've got this chop on the water. That's a north wind coming down. Uh, oddly, we've actually warmed up a little bit, though, air temperature-wise. It's getting more comfortable. So after our run, I'll probably strip out of this really hot stuff and get a little more comfortable. But I don't even know where we're going to go yet. We're just going to run around and stop on something that looks good. But let's make a move. Golly, that's a good one. <laughs> I let that jig fall down a break. As soon as it got down, I moved it one time and just dong. That fish crushed that jig. That's awesome. Fish was almost straight up and down. And it's another good one. No way. I was over the top of a tree and I was looking down on it with my electronics, just checking it out. Really not even paying attention to the fact that I still had my jig in the water and all of a sudden I had a fish on. Crazy. Got him. Another beautiful fish. Jeez. What a day. Every one of these fish is just so nice. 
another awesome, awesome smallie. That fish was way over there. I was out here looking at where this point breaks off to deep water. And that big old smallie, boy, that's a big one, was clear back up there on top. I'm out in 30, 35 feet of water. A fish was up there in 15. That's awesome. All right, guys, I think we're gonna wrap it up with this one. There's no question the afternoon has drastically slowed down compared to the morning, which is very, very common this time of year. That's why we get up early and get out and try and catch them early, particularly the big ones. I mean, there's just something about morning in the winter, but like I told you in the beginning, today was slated to be a sit down teaching video and after all those buyers guides i just wanted to go fish and i hope you enjoyed coming along one thing i do want to talk to you about i mean it is winter we talk a lot about throwing jigs i threw two jigs today i'll link you the exact colors sizes all that stuff but basically one's a green pumpkin and brown One's a green pumpkin, orange and brown. They both got that green pumpkin with that copper purple trailer on them. But we talk a lot about throwing a jig in the winter. I think for some people it really resonates. Other people sort of blow it off because a lot of people have tried jig fishing and just can't catch them. And I get that. Uh, the jig is one of those things where you're not gonna catch a ton of fish. I mean, what did we get today? Like seven or eight fish? maybe had 10 or 11 total bites. Uh, if we had gone finessing, I think we probably could have blasted them in the morning, but I think we would have caught much smaller fish. See the jig, it will still catch good numbers. Like we had a good solid day, but when you cross paths with a giant, in that regard, it's almost like a swim bait where it just, those big ones want to eat that thing for whatever reason. So don't be afraid to put that jig in your arsenal, even if it hasn't worked for you before. Try again. I mean, we committed to it all day today. The bites came here and there. And, you know, obviously you guys are fast forwarding between bites, but you'll notice multiple times right then where I'm just out looking at a ledge, one that bit under the boat while I was looking at a tree, like, you can tell that my mind has drifted because these bites aren't coming every five minutes. But then boom, there's another big one. You know, we caught smallies and largemouth today, but a bunch of gorgeous smallmouth. I mean, those fish are so pretty. I hope you guys enjoyed coming along with me. Uh, I'll link all the gear in the video description. I told you earlier I was throwing that 844C MBR, one of my favorite rods. This one would surprise a lot of people though. Mega Bass Orochi series. This is not the Brailleist because I'm throwing a finesse hook. This is the EMTF, their Extreme Mission Type F, which is actually uh, like a treble hook rod, but I do extremely well on it with heavier football style jigs as well as wobble heads in the summertime. Uh, you know, we're always looking for rods that can do multiple things. And this is one of those that just shines in a bunch of things. Anyway, I'll link all that gear along with the specific baits I was throwing. If you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.